Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology and Carleton University, University Department of Geography and Environmental Sciences. And I'm just continuing um, this discussion on methane um, on the seafloor in the Arctic and basically the risks of it coming up given that the sea ice is rapidly declining. So I was describing this um, hydrate stability curve and the water temperature and where the temperature is lower and you're under the curve, you have this, this uh, stability zone for hydrates. Of course, the hydrates can't be in the, form in the water column. They form in the sediments, in the, in the poor water. You have methane um, in aqueous, um, dissolved methane in the water. And then if the pressure and temperature are, are in, those, in this zone, then you get, a, you get ice forming around the methane molecules. So why um, is there a lot of organic matter here? Well, of course, extensive shallow water areas of the Arctic continental shelf are underlain by permafrost. Remember that at the peak of the last ice age, 21,000 years ago, um, the sea levels were about 130 meters lower. So there was lots of these areas that were um, the, this, this permafrost was formed in terrestrial conditions. This was above uh, sea level. You got a lot of organic matter on the surface. And then as it was submerged um, by the post-glacial rise in sea level, the methane was trapped within the permafrost and the organic matter was there. Um, so in the Beaufort Sea, the submerged permafrost is confined to shallow water depths, less than 20 meters within 30 kilometers of the shoreline. So methane concentrations in these sediments are high, but there's not a lot of bubbles. Be um, uh, there's no systematic changes in methane concentrations close to the seafloor between near, sh near shore sediments underlain by permafrost and those lacking such permafrost. However, in other regions on the eastern Siberian Arctic shelf, average depth 45 meters, there's a very high dissolved methane concentrations in the water column and elevated concentrations in the atmosphere, five to 10% higher um, than background up to eight, than the average up to 1800 meters in height above the sea surface. Also in the Laptev Sea, um, there's methane released from the permafrost, but it's oxidized by the sediments. So basically this paper is outlining work that has been done um, in this area to try to look at all of the different processes and see how they're, um, how they're affecting the methane coming up. So let's have a look at some of the things that affect methane distribution in the Arctic marine sediment. So the first thing is transport processes through the sediment. So in the sediment, you, you, we call it a matrix. So there's rock of different sizes and there's whole, there, there's por it's porous. So water is able to flow through between all of the particles and there's methane dissolved in these poor waters and it's transported by diffusion. So if there's high methane concentrations in one area, low in another area, diffusion will want to move the material from high concentration areas to low concentration areas. There's also advection, so the fluid itself is moving through, it's carrying the methane through. There's also gas, so there's bubbles or actual gas, individual bubbles or a continuous stream, and that will want to go up through the sediments. So um, the concentration, whenever there's a concentration gradient, then there's the first law, fixed first law of diffusion determines how, you know, the, the, the diffusion will occur following a tortuous pass through the sediment grains. And so the higher the porosity, the more holes there are between the um, grains of sand and dirt, etc., the more transport there can be. Um, there's also more advection, so more movement of the fluid and the gas is dissolved in the fluid. Um, and this is described by Darcy's equation. So you get movement of methane up through the sediments. Um, and so these are, the, these are some of the mechanisms. And then you get, so let's have a look at some of the other. Now there's a difference between active marine, marine margin environments and passive. So in passive, 
there's no tectonic process. There's no earthquakes, no crustal movement. So diffusion and burial of the poor water are the governing transport mechanisms. And the methane is usually completely consumed in the sediment by anaerobic oxidation of methane, AOM. This is an important um, factor. Um, in active marine environments where there's a tectonic pressure, tectonic uh, forces, and there'll typically be high, higher sedimentation rates and compaction. So you, the, the methane coming through can exceed the ability of the microbes to dissolve it. So you get some of it going into the water column. And um, if there's large flows of methane, then you get pockmarks on the bottom or these so-called mud volcanoes, which have a lot of methane coming out of them, or carbonate um, pavements, if you like, regions on the seafloor where there's lots of carbonate on the, on the, on the surface of the seafloor. So um, methane has been seen coming up from these pockmarks. So here's an example. Um, this, is a, this is a ship that was moving across. Um, so this is uh, acoustic sonar images and they picked up this gas bubble plume here, um, and they saw it also uh, 10 minutes later. They stopped the ship, and they, this is a continuous scan. The ship went past, and it turned around, and they saw it again here, and it's being carried through by the prevailing uh, ocean current. So lots of um, methane coming up, being detected. Um, and basically, the when there's ice okay so now ice is a big factor like what's happening in the absence or presence of ice and what's happening you know how much of the methane is in free gas that is trapped under the permafrost or under the hydrates and you know how many bubbles are formed what's the size of the bubbles um, what's the effect of the increasing temperature of the water um, what's the effect of um, you know, this type of seafloor, so these, you know, the, a lot of these sediments are from glacial erosion, so they're poorly sorted. So they're all different sizes, in other words. There's, so there's, um, you know, low porosity because the big, you have the big grains, but you have a lot of smaller grains as well. Um, so they fill the pore spaces, so that's porosity, maybe 30% air gaps or, or gaps between the material allowing water to flow. Um, so this would impede vertical migration of methane and so on. So there's lots of these different factors. And of course, the ice barrier is another big factor. So, so, there's, so let's have a look uh, at some of the processes now here. So here is where we have, okay, so we have methane. We have this um, methane plume coming up here. So we have methane diffusing through the sediments and in the sediment it can react with sulf with sulfate which is diffusing down from the seawater and that breaks up the methane and this is the AOM or anaerobic oxidation of methane process which which is the second largest sink of methane on the planet we believe the first one of course is methane in the atmosphere being broken down you have photochemical um, processes breaking down H2O, breaking off a of hydrogen, you get OH minus in the atmosphere, and then the OH minus reacts with methane in the atmosphere, and it, um, it uh, produces CO2 and water, so, so that's the biggest sink of methane. That's why the methane lifetime in the atmosphere is fairly short. This is the next uh, most important process, the AOM, and you also have um, some of the methane coming up into the dissolved in the water column. And this is now aero the aerobic uh, decomposition of methane, aerobic methane oxidation. So the methane in solution reacts with water and uh, oxygen in solution forming CO2 and water. So that also breaks down the methane. But this is only with methane in aqueous form. When it's in bubbles, it will bypass both of these processes and go straight up. So if there's faults and fissures, um, and then and the methane and the methane is in a gas trap below a permafrost layer or something as that permafrost layer uh, melts out and there's cracks and holes and a passageway the methane bubbles will come through 
they'll work their way up, make the, make the passageway bigger, and then you can come up. So they completely swamp out these processes. This is why these processes are for low, you know, the existing, mostly the existing rates. If methane starts coming up in much larger quantities, then a lot more will get up into the atmosphere. It'll bypass these, these processes. So, uh, let's see here. So there's a couple other processes going on. Um, this uh, dissociation of the hydrates, it requires energy, heat. So, so the, and also when you get the release gas, the, you produce, these processes both produce water. So they make the, the water more uh, fresher, right? Because this is fresh water that's created here and then fresh water can freeze at a higher temperature than salt water. So some of these processes can actually try to slow down the release of methane, but there's lots of others that increase it. So there's lots of um, different uh, processes. So this is called the microbial methane filter in the sediments. And here, as I said before, um, it's the largest sink of methane on our planet. Um, Behind, second large, well, the largest sink is the photochemical processes of the troposphere with the OH minus, and this is the next largest uh, process. So the anaerobic oxidation of methane, again, here's the formula here, and so the sulfates are coming down from the seawater, and the methane is going up, and in this zone called the sulfate-methane transition zone, which is this whole area here, then you get the AOM, anaerobic break oxidation of methane. In the water column above, you have oxygen, so you get, the, um, you get that process, the aerobic oxidation of methane. Okay, so there's other factors that are important. So it's a narrow sediment zone. Um, and the sulfate is dominated by the diffusion coming down. The methane is coming up from below. Um, so if the methane is advecting, being carried in current, um, it can swamp out the ability of the microbes to break it down. Um, the microbes' activity depends on some things. So um, it also, as it warms, then the microbes are happier. So there's more of them, they can break it down, but also there's a lot more methane coming up. Um, so it takes time for these new populations of AOM microbes to grow, and there's doubling times associated with them and stuff. So there's lots of different processes happening. The, the mode and magnitude of methane transportation is important. Remember, it can be advected or it can be diffused or if there's bubbles, these bubbles will move up, or you can have uh, plumes of gas, uh, the gaseous phase just moving up through the water. So there's all of these different factors. And temperatures, so as there's higher temperatures, there's more AOM microbes, but there's also a lot more methane. And also, so the sea ice has a huge impact. Um, there's also the sea ice, because the wave action, mixing of the water versus stratification, et cetera, et cetera. So also the water depth is very important. So if there's methane seeps, here's the, the gas hydrate stability zone. If the methane seeps out here, depending on the bubble size, this is just two, two examples given. If you've got small three millimeter diameter, um, three millimeter, millimeter radius bubbles, then they, could, they don't rise, basically, the bubbles here, this is, this is the fraction of methane in the bubble versus what was actually released. And this goes down to zero, so no more bubble, no more methane bubble. It's dissolved in the water column. If the bubble is bigger, it rises up, goes up a couple hundred meters. So if the plume is deep, then the, the methane is just dissolved in the water column. If the seep is at a much shallower depth, then some of the methane bubbles will actually make it right up into the, into the atmosphere. So this factor is also going on. Now, you have to remember that most of the Eastern Siberian Arctic Shelf, the water is very shallow. So in that case, we're going to have, you know, at 50 meters coming up here, large fractions of methane reaching the atmosphere. I'll have to continue this in a, in a final.